Hi friends, in this video we're going to talk about peritonitis and if you like this video make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We come out with new content every week for nurses, nursing students, and pre-nursing students and also make sure to check out all the free resources down below. I have a cardiac study guide, a bunch of different study guides that are free, and then also the NCLEX study guide and those will all be linked down below but let's get into it. So peritonitis is an inflammation of the peritoneum, and it's usually a result of a bad bacterial infection. Appendicitis and diverticulitis may both lead to peritonitis, and all of them are acute inflammatory intestinal disorders. Peritonitis is inflammation of the peritoneum, and that is the serous membrane lining the abdominal cavity and covering the viscera. So here is the pathophysiology. So first, peritonitis starts with a leakage. It's caused by leakage of contents from the abdominal organs into the abdominal cav cavity. This leads to bacterial proliferation occurring and edema of the tissues occur, fluid develops in a short period of time and the fluid in the peritoneal cavity becomes turbid with increasing amounts of protein, white blood cells, cellular debris, and blood. And the immediate response of the intestinal tract is hypermotility, so soon followed by paralytic ileus with an accumulation of air and fluid in the bowels. So the causes of peritonitis can be from an injury like a gunshot wound or a stab wound or inflammation that extends from an outside organ outside the peritoneal area, such as a kidney could cause peritonitis, and bacteria, which is the most common implications, are E. coli, Clizabella, Proteus, Smoothius, and Streptococcus. So clinical manifestations in these patients will see pain. So at first there's a diffuse pain that tends to become constant, localized, and more intense over the site as the pathologic processes occur. There'll be tenderness, so the affected area of the abdomen becomes extremely tender and distended. The muscles become rigid and movement could aggravate it further. And there'll be altered vital signs, so usually there is an increase in temperature and an increase in pulse rate. So complications that can occur include sepsis, which is the major cause of death from peritonitis, shock, which can result from sepsis or hypovolemia, and internal obstruction, so the inflammatory process may cause intestinal obstruction, primarily from the development of bowel adhesion. So assessment and diagnostic findings, we will see an increased white blood cell count. We can look at serum electrolytes. They may reveal elevated levels of potassium, sodium, and chloride. We can use an abdominal x-ray, which may show air or fluid levels, as well as distended bowel loops. We can look at abdominal ultrasounds, which can reveal abscesses and fluid collection. We can look at a CT scan to reveal any abscess formation, and an MRI can be used to diagnose an intra-abdominal abscess. So the medical management for these patients includes the administration of several liters of isotonic solution. We can also use analgesics for pain, they may need intubation or suction, intestinal intubation and suction assist in relieving abdominal distension and promoting intestinal function. They may need oxygen therapy, which will promote adequate oxygenation, and they may need antibiotic therapy is usually initiated early in the treatment of peritonitis. So surgical management, surgical treatment is directed towards excision, especially if the appendix is involved. We can also use a resection of the intestines, maybe done with or without osmosis. They may need a fecal diversion if there is extensive sepsis. So nursing assessment. So we want to assess for pain. It should be assessed continually continuously 
and they should relieve, receive pain management. We can look at GI function and we should look at fluid and electrolytes and make sure that they are balanced. Some nursing diagnoses, and again, there can be a lot of these. These are just some examples, include acute pain related to peritoneal irritation, deficient fluid volume related to massive shifting of fluid towards the intestinal lumen and depletion of vascular space, and risk for shock related to sepsema or hypovolemia. Our nursing diagnoses can include reduced level of pain, preventing complications, restore fluid and electrolyte balances, and restore normal GI functions. Different interventions that we can give to these patients include blood pressure monitoring, and this can be done through an arterial line if shock is present. Medications, we can administer analgesic and antiemetics. Pain management, GESICs, and positioning could help decrease pain. INO monitoring, so we want to record and take an output to help with fluid replacement and IV fluids, which we should also be monitoring, and drainage monitoring, so we should record the character of any drainage postoperatively. So our evaluation, these are just some examples. Again, these are based on your patient and their outcomes. So reduced level of pain, restored fluid and electrolyte imbalance, prevented complications, restored normal GI functioning. And their discharge in home care. So this is going to include education. So we should educate the patient and family about care for their incisions and drainage post-op especially if they're sent home with drains in place, and referrals for home care may be indicated for further monitoring. So documentation and guidelines should include client's description and response to pain, acceptable level of pain, INO, fluid balance, prior med use, pres of edema, degree of deficit, results of diagnostic tests, vital signs, and current sources of fluid intake. And these are all the same that were in the last slide, except it's also adding plan of care and teaching, response to interventions and teaching, actions performed, attainment of progress towards desired outcomes, and modifications to the plan and long-term needs. So that is it for peritonitis. If you guys liked this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe down below and check out all of the free resources down below and I'll see you next time. Bye.